your what is your SOP in terms of communications? I mean, if an incident happens, you know, you're supposed to make an announcement X minutes after you're supposed to get back to command center, mm -hmm. and then if there's you know if there's not going to be an immediate mm -hmm. uh, solution, then you supposed to another mm -hmm. email announcement. Do you have an SOP mm -hmm. for communication? Yes, we do. I think Wai Ming can give you some of the timing or some yeah. of the announcements when we started making announcements yeah. because the incident happened at. Uh, uh, 1956. Uh, so Six there were what well, announcements were made. Maybe give you an idea because there are announcements made, um, but sometimes you know people are awake, They don't. Uh, they, they may not hear all of it, mm -hmm. and some of it has to be delayed because um, the staff may not uh, know what's happening yet. Because even you are quite blind to the situation in the initial minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because you wouldn't expect the trail to be down. You don't expect the shoes to be out. You don't know that's the situation. What we can see at that point is just the system has frozen and four strains are stalled. So maybe you can say what are the statements? That some some statements we make is to let them know we are aware of things, we are trying to investigate how long it takes. But really, uh, sometimes it's difficult to tell the actual, actual timing on the ground for the. We will try to as fast as possible to let our train officer know about this timing. But really, we also have difficulty to tell them exactly because on the ground, the recovery team are working equally hard to get the thing out. So we must see which one we can give the information. Sometimes the information can be not be so accurate, and that also we are concerned. So sometimes we have uh, under uh, informed, then and we, we also uh, felt uneasy about telling somebody too optimistic when we are not sure. Although we think this is a typical timing. But, um, but you couldn't put up an announcement to sort of tell people to remain calm and you know be trying to get help and. Then it, it's like I said, then you won't have people smashing windows mm. and stuff like that. I think it's mm. really fear of the unknown. Like, how long are you going to be stuck here? Right. You know, it'll be for we, 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 so agree, we, 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 we agree with you. I think we have put some, some may not be sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, I think the major part that not just people in the train itself, but just outside waiting for the trains that they didn't know what was happening. The mm. Communication aside, they feel that the staff on the ground could have been telling them, the trains are not working, go and find their mm -hmm. alternative, but a lot of them were not told. So, I mean, mm -hmm. in that sense, does communication, will the way people communicate on the ground will have to change? Will that change and will it change from a more top-down approach? Because at some point, the staff didn't know anything at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you give a breakdown of the timeline communication wise? I think you have the timing on the first announcements and all that. Uh, uh, I think this one. This one. Uh, I think all the announcements. Maybe you can explain this one. Uh, as early for the train, we took example for a train uh, that was stuck in the uh, orchard. As early as uh, 1857, as early as 1857, announcements were already made. 1857, we already made uh, some announcements. Uh, uh, for the train at the uh, orchard, as early as 1857, we have already uh, tried to make announcements for the particular train. But as, as the... Um, some of them may not have uh, heard the announcement, but some of them actually uh, heard the announcement on this portion here. We, at about 1960, we keep on telling passengers the announcement, even like uh, keep away from the doors in case uh, we want to open and all these things. So actually, we actually did uh, make some announcements. But I said, it may not be sufficient for a person uh, uh, over there uh, to be comfortable about. But in the announcement, yes, we did make uh, try our best to make as much as announcement as we can. In the stations, in the stations, the stations at the station itself, we make announcement. From our control center, we also, once we have information, also make announcement to all the station. You know, at a certain time of the uh, yesterday's incident, we did close some of the stations. We also make intense announcement about the start of uh, closing. I must say that we didn't, we there are room for uh, discussion about uh, this communication thing, but. With the resources we have, we have uh, tried to optimize as much as we can. The staff on the ground also have to spend time to answer to a lot of queries. That makes the ground staff unable to really um, continuously uh, make announcements. I just want to uh, during these things that happen, any of you guys who are on the ground to really meet the, the passengers? Uh, 
Yes. My director, yes. My director, yes. Of course. Yes. Of course. Down. Yeah. As it's at one of the complex station that is uh, at City Hall. The director of train ops was actually down there on the ground. Okay. Can I can I just elaborate on what my minister to explain? Eh? For example, uh, like yesterday, six forty-seven, the incident occurred. There was a train. Eh? Oh. And then uh, subsequently discovered that it was just it was more than one train, four trains, and all this took place in a few minutes. By the time uh, they went out to the ground to determine that it was something serious, okay? once we determined it was something serious, it was, really, it was really about seven fifteen like that. Okay, then we knew that it was going to be something. Uh, it was going to take a few hours for us to recover. Now at the point in time, that's when we activated our emergency plan. Okay. When we, activate, when we activate the emergency plan, that means we send SMSs to all our staff yeah, who are part of this emergency team. So you would uh, understand that when we send this out, on our time, it was 7.23, we activated our people. But you would imagine that our staff, some will be driving home, some will be kept in the train, some will be out having dinner. But this is when they all recover. But within an hour, more than, uh, more than 50 of our staff, well, in the first half an hour, they were already there. The rest of us were already here. And Waiming has already uh, gone down to the station where the fall is, and uh, Mr. Ku was already there. They were there because they were, we were all around uh, the office yesterday. I think the management of the whole incident is multi-faced and multi-positions. Uh, management has to be both at the OCC to see uh, because that's the only place to sight of everything, what's going on. Uh, the technical people have to be on the ground to see how to resolve the problem. And at the stations, there are those who will be there to manage the crowds. And, to, and there's a team of uh, uh, bus people to ensure the buses come and the bus drivers got to be told where to go. So you can imagine the multi-touch points. So we had a few hundred of our non normal operation staff from the office, from every department going up to help. And this happens all the time at all hours. I mean like the last time it happened in January was 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I, I was on a taxi going around and making sure that the stations were best managed and the signs was up just to make sure things were okay. So it doesn't matter even yesterday was, you know, it happened about six something. But I can tell you when the wee hours of the morning, everybody just drops tools and goes. So yes. as to the, the, the public announcement, they are also complaining by commenters for not saying that they don't understand because the announcement are the same in English. So yes. is there a better way of doing things like we have all like we just correct and correct? This is something I think we are considering to work on. We actually yeah. on this item, uh, I, uh, my CEO has already actually uh, speak about this and we are previously, we are actually looking seriously how to make this become a reality. Mm -hmm. We must understand that it's... Been for so long, uh, no, the, the problem number one is that I think... Uh, uh, first and foremost, I mean, they are very used to making sure we have the good announcements that go out. And one of the things that not all our train drivers can speak Mandarin. We have many non-Chinese train drivers as well. So to have a Mandarin-speaking uh, train driver, and at that time, uh, when this incident was down, uh, in the trains, the only communication was from the, largely from the train driver. Uh, so what's the plot of the yeah, I think we would want to do pre uh, pre recorded yeah. messages of, uh, but it's, you must understand the situation is very uh, volatile. Even if we pre record certain messages, it may be actually misleading and for certain situations. We are carrying out some small scale uh, on these things, and we find some difficulty in it. We are trying to find ways to overcome it. So, given the seriousness of the disruptions for the last few days, that the cause of the members of the public for senior executives at SMRT to take responsibility and design. Well, it is something that I would seriously consider if that is a necessity to do so. But I think I will reserve comment at this moment. So can I just find out, you know, with regard to the whole contingency plans, will you like consider special thing to better improve, you know, management, you know, like let's say put in like uh, on standby torch lights, you know, blankets or whatever, you know, like what lunching system, you know, they have, you know, during winter when the when the trains break down they have like In this area, if there is a, a good suggestions that we we can we will look into it. But practically, we think the way forward is to uh, move the train quickly to the stations, and uh, that's an area that we are trying to see how best we can do about it. To put other things into the stations in our tropical environment may not be very practical. But if there's any good suggestions, we, we will look into it. How about all these? Where were the last time that you changed? 
mean, you revise this SOP. Mm-hmm. This yes. to be revised periodically, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So when was the last time that the revision? We do it all the time. We do it all the time. When was the last time? Months. In months, every every year we do review all the SOPs several times a year, and it is being reviewed even after every incident again to see where there were gaps. So the previous one was one month ago. No, about I would say about three four months ago at least. Mm-hmm.